share with you a few ideas on leading small group meetings. Now, not just for any small group, but for a discipleship small group. You know what the Great Commission is focused on, making disciples. And I think one of the, the best, one of the most efficient and effective ways of making disciples is through small groups, discipleship small groups. Let me give you an idea of what I mean by discipling small group. This list here constitutes some of the dynamic of a discipling small group. So a, a good discipling group will, will include personal guidance, spiritual guidance, particularly from the leader. It'll include accountability for spiritual disciplines. It'll include application of, of biblical principles. It'll include confession. Con confess your faults one to another, right? And also encouragement. Provoke one another to good works. Encouraging people to be faithful to, to the gospel. And just, just to be a, a general blessing to, to each other and encouragement. This is the dynamic of a discipling small group. And notice that all of these are important for spiritual growth, very important for spiritual growth. And they occur most naturally in a small group situation as opposed to a large group. Now, you can do some of this one-on-one. -on -one. However, with a small group, you get the efficiency, you get the, the different personalities sharing with one another, you get the benefit from the camaraderie of disciples sharing with disciples. There are a lot of benefits of that sort of, of small group for the purpose of discipleship. Another thing I wanted to mention is that small groups are helpful in regard to the steps in the development of character. So you see this chart. Now, so let's say that I want to develop the character quality of, I want to be a man of prayer, all right? Well, it starts with belief. I have to believe something about prayer. Well, those things, those beliefs have to translate into my valuing it, my appreciating the importance of prayer to the point where I make it a priority. I decide, all right, I'm going to get up 15 minutes earlier every day. I'm going to, to spend time in prayer. Well, that commitment has to translate into behavior, right? And then that behavior, if it's followed through on, will become a habit, right? You do enough, do something enough times, it becomes a habit, and then that will produce character. So I can become a man of prayer through these habituated uh, practices, right? So think about, though, how small groups can help you. It's, it's in the area of behavior and habits where discipling small groups have an advantage because of the accountability factor. So thinking about these things, let's now talk about the actual small group meeting. The model small group meeting that I want to propose to you, this is based on years of leading small groups and, and organizing and supervising small groups. I think this is the best way of of going through a, a, a meeting. Let's say you have about an hour to work with. How about spending about 10 minutes with a list of icebreakers, maybe two or three icebreakers that you share, and then about 20 minutes on the Bible study. If you have more than an hour, you could spend 30 minutes. But this time will go fast because about half the time, you're going to focus on application. So, so you ask open-ended questions, you, you uh, have a lot of interaction, but you, you, at the end especially, you are each sharing how you are going to personally apply that biblical principle to your life. So it's not just information. It's only about 50% content, but you have 50% application. 
And then you move into the covenant time. This is the accountability time for about 15 minutes and then about 15 minutes of prayer and share. So this is the general structure of a small group meeting. Now let's uh, dig a little deeper into it. With the opener, let me encourage you to use some good icebreakers. The goal is to get to know each other, become comfortable with each other. And I'll say this, that icebreakers are most important at the formation of the group as people begin to get to know each other. And let me recommend a resource, The Complete Book of Questions by Gary Poole, 1001 Conversation Starters. This is a good book, especially because of the way it's organized. You have at the beginning of the book more light and easy questions. Toward the end, you have more spiritual, more philosophical questions that are interesting. Let me give you a, a list of some of the questions from the beginning of the book, and at least most of these are from there. What do you do if you can't sleep at night? Um, another example, who's the most famous person you've ever met? Or what's the worst thing you've ever tasted? Or maybe, uh, are you more of a rule breaker or a rule follower and why? What's one of your hobbies? Would you describe yourself as more of a, a, um, a laid back person or an intense person and why? And you could also use this activity, the, the two truths and a lie, which works best if you, have, you know each other a little bit. All right, so there's, there are some icebreaker ideas. You can go on the internet, you can find a, a lot of other ideas out there. I'm sure you've used some of these. And then you might want to have a go along with the lesson icebreaker, um, maybe a transitional icebreaker of some sort, and then you move into your Bible study time. So dealing with various topics, such as assurance, such as what it takes to be a disciple, these would be most important for new believers, these first two. But all of these topics that I'm going to mention are also good to share, to talk about even later on, even uh, as you progress, you're a mature believer. It's still good to be in a small group. It's still good to deal with practical topics such as how to pray, how to study the Bible, how to overcome temptation, how to be filled with the Spirit. All of these can be dealt with on a basic level or on a more advanced level. More topics, how to share your faith, how to make right decisions, Bible memory, how to worship God, stewardship. I've collected these topics and more into a booklet called Discipleship Lessons, and I've edited these based on uh, some topics and some resources that I've, I've gotten these lessons from. Okay, you're welcome to email me and, and get some, some of these uh, PDFs. I can provide this in a PDF. And then you move from your Bible study time into your covenant time. Now, there could be some sort of transition because there are some, are some things in your Bible study time that maybe you've made a commitment to. Maybe you've decided, I want to, to do something in prayer that I haven't done before. That could carry over into your covenant time because the covenant time is your accountability time. And so what I would recommend is that you send home with your small group members a form so uh, this, is, this is what I, I do with, with my groups. So you explain the form, you ask the members to, to take it home, to pray about it, to think about what they'd like to commit to, and then you ask them to bring it back. Now, most people or a lot of people are not going to actually fill it out, and they may even forget to bring it back, but that's okay because you have extra copies and you are going to spend time during the covenant time segment of your small group meeting to fill this out. And then everybody shares with each other what these goals are. Just make sure you're not setting the goals for the members. They're, they're generating their own goals. Okay, this, is, this is the form that I'm, that I'm talking about. So that you're committing to three different areas. The first is in the area of your spiritual weaknesses. 
So you identify an area of weakness that you are willing to be held accountable for. You also commit to follow the following ministry goals, and you list certain things. S specific and measurable goals, not just something like, I want to pray more, I want to read my Bible more. It's specific. And then also, okay, so ministry goals like witnessing, um, discipleship, spiritual disciplines like prayer, Bible reading, uh, maybe you want to start journaling, maybe fasting. You sign it, you date it, you share these goals with each other, and uh, then hold each other accountable. So then every week, every member reports on every goal. Now, this isn't a mean time, a judgmental time. It's a time of encouragement. It's a time to share suggestions on how I've, I've been able to reach this goal or overcome this temptation. This may, may be able to help you if you would like to overcome a certain, a certain area or, or reach a certain goal. Other general questions could be asked, like, how has the Holy Spirit been working in your life this week? You could ask, um, how are you and God getting along? Or um, is there anything in your life that's keeping you from loving God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself? So, so things like that, not just check off the box stuff. And then this moves into your prayer share time. Now, in your covenant time, maybe there was a confession, maybe there was an admission, man, I'm, I'm weak in this area. This can come over into the prayer share time. A few ideas for the, your prayer share time. How about only doing one request at a time? Not sharing a bunch of requests and then having one person pray for that. How about one request, a volunteer to pray for that request, and then you move on to the next request. Some other ideas, how about alphabet prayer around the circle? So let's say we want to have a praise time, praising God for who he is or uh, what he has made. Use the alphabet. So let's say I started, I praise God, I say, God, thank you because you are an awesome God. And then the next person uses a B to praise, praise God for some attribute that he has and so on. Another idea would be to have one sentence prayers, go around the room with one sentence prayers, popcorn prayers. Popcorn prayers are, are spontaneous, they're random, they're quick, they could be simultaneous. Uh, unison prayer, that's everybody praying aloud together or silent, guided prayer. Or pairing up and praying for each other, or using the ACTS formula. So you have four volunteers, one does adoration, one does confession, one does thanksgiving, one does supplication. Or the Trinity prayer. Everybody, well, three people volunteer to pray to the Trinity, one to the Father, one to the Son, one to the Holy Spirit. And when they pray to each of those members of the Trinity, they're acknowledging them in the roles that they play in salvation. Okay, so those are the four aspects of a small group meeting that, that meets for the purpose of discipleship. This is going to be most effective if you plan ahead, though. Use a planner. So you, you see here there's, there's a, a sheet that has uh, one side for planning and, and one side for reporting. You can't see this, but I'll, I'll zoom up on it here. So the front of it, you're planning ahead, you're writing down some things that you're going to be talking about in the meeting. And then afterwards, you report on that. You take attendance, you, you say how well you've kept to the agenda, you evaluate the meeting, strong and weak points. Hopefully you share this with your apprentice, hopefully you have an apprentice, or you share it with your pastor, or you, you file it, you check back uh, on these reports to see the progress of your, of your small group members. All right, so there you go. A few ideas on leading a discipleship small group meeting. Uh, remember, small groups can be a very effective way to, to make disciples. 
and fulfill the Great Commission. If you want any other ideas for uh, materials or curricula, or you want to access the, the forms, and have I, I could share the uh, curricula that, that you, I use for, for my small group meetings, uh, you can write me at mbird at gbs.edu. Thank you.